Dr. Wade Nobles, and this place that we're standing is dedicated to service and to the drive to achieve a better world. Think about that, achieving the better world, to what is possible when people, resources, and communities gather to form a village and to have a collective purpose. The film you're about to see is called Voices from the Village. Hear what I just said, Voices from the Village. It is dedicated to service and caring to a mutual purpose of uniting from different cultural lenses, from different practices, values, and beliefs. A village. A village is a special composition of members and the distinct ways in which they hold and preserve the best of their ideas, of their practices. Voice is important. Voice represents and reflects the village essence of being human. That's so profound, being human. It tells its special story. It tells its special truth. Voices from the Village celebrates the special story of the Alameda County Behavioral Health Care Services Substance Use Primary Prevention Providers and the unique communities they belong to and serve. Listen as the voices reveal the strengths and in indigenous protective factors on which the village depends. Listen to the special ways that each community cares for itself and see how behavioral health care services offers support to affirm, to deepen the village's fortitude in its ability to heal and to thrive. The village in our communities are dedicated to the essential restoration of wellness. Prevention is working to add value and meaning by listening to the voices from the village and honoring their sacred stories. All of our programs, I think the cultural aspect that we have in the cultural um, intervention piece is what kind of sets us apart from a lot of the different youth organizations that everything that we do is in some way culturally competent and um, making sure that we are inclusive of all the different tribes that we have that are here in the in our community and in the Bay Area. We try to create campaigns and like information, have the youth make brochures around AOD, around prevention, so that um, it's them speaking about it and then other youth, you know, getting to see it. They know that all of our services, all of our events are AOD free. And we have been able to, you know, bring in traditional consultants. And this is actually um, the second time that we have a traditional consultant that is available for teen night. I've been coming out here now, I believe, 24, 25 years, namely to do uh, what we call ceremony, relatives. Uh, help them uh, attain what we call uh, balance and harmony in their lives. We started with funding from the Alameda County Behavioral Health Care Services, um, and that got the ball rolling with uh, providing alcohol and drug education to seniors. And we tied it into other areas of wellness, so including things like nutrition with a registered dietitian, working with medication safety and learning the different local resources of how we can include more of that as a way to provide education to our seniors. It not only takes the programs and learning about nutrition, fitness, it takes doing it with other people and feeling connected to the other people again and the other clients again. The volunteers, they come up and help me do anything that I want. If I say, oh, I need somebody to wash my windows, they'll send a group from the Rotary Club comes. I couldn't do any of it without the community because I work with the churches. I ask them if I can have somebody take somebody to the grocery store they'll help me. I also work with the uh, uh, rotaries, like Florence was saying. They can clean windows, they flip mattresses. We do cleaning of refrigerators. We do anything. We don't want them climbing on things, so it, it makes it, them more safe. All of us connecting to each other that makes it a good world. Voices from
have a wonderful large vast of volunteers that provide shelter dinners. What's really important to this program is a sense of community and us sticking together and us supporting each other and because sometimes for some of us it gets difficult. So the fact that we stay a close-knit community and other people support our seniors and their health and their wellness is really important. So, you know, St. Mary's has a lot of things to offer if you want it. This is a self-help program. If you want something different in your life, it's here for you. For us being seniors, you know, this is what we do. We meet here every day at 12 o'clock. You know, people come, we have lunch, a great lunch. And, you know, you're able to sit around people are like your own peers and, you know, talk about things that, you know, concerns you. So it's a very great place to be and also a very safe place. If you don't have a dream, you can't go, you know, past. And until I had that dream, I was just, you know, going along with it. And St. Mary's helped me to dream again and to have a vision. We offer services in Oakland, Emeryville, in Berkeley, operating in nine schools. By nature, we are an alcohol and other drug uh, service provider. Uh, Newbridge Foundation, which has been around for a long time, uh, since 1968. And uh, the adolescent program was born uh, more than 20 years ago. Some of the things that we'll be doing uh, in our mentoring program, teaching them about how to build healthy relationships. Finance, how do you open a bank account? If you want to go on and further your education, what does that mean to now show up at the college and fill out a college application? How do you manage your anger? How do you manage your frustration? Those things that will help them become self-sustaining and further themselves in life. That's what we're going to do in our mentoring program. Part of my approach and my mentoring program, and I use this all the time, man didn't go to the moon because he didn't see it. He saw it and then he aspired for that. So our kids need to see something to aspire for. And if you don't see a black male in your community, in your house, at school, as a black young male, what are you aspiring for? Let's not stand on the sideline and watch. Let's jump in and impact what our kids are missing or us. Drugs and alcohol in my community, they definitely, it takes a, it's a strong impact on them because the, my friends that do do drugs or alcohol, they have, they're like not as focused and not, not there, they seem like zombies just walking around. And it's like, they're not living, they're just existing. They chose me for this program because of my leadership skills. Um, I'm on different committees and the school board, and so they definitely look to me to help. So Project Eden's primary prevention services, we're actually clinic-based, but more so school-based located services. So we're actually in five school districts. So we have Castro Valley, Hayward, San Lorenzo, San Leandro, and a component of New Haven, which is Union City. And so basically our primary prevention services that are funded through Alameda County Behavioral Health Care Services are on school campuses providing education and prevention services, not only to the students, but also to the parents. We also do education to the faculty, administration about alcohol on drug issues that they're having on their campuses, whether it's identified or unidentified. I think the strongest component of our program really is around working with the parents. So it gives us the opportunity to go in and work with the parents around some of the challenges that they're having, not only in their homes, but at schools and in their communities around alcohol and other drugs. And so I think a protective factor is the fact that they come together, that they care, that they're empowering each other. A lot of our um, families are very involved in their church. I think that's a strong protective factor. Um, there's a lot of community groups, you know, especially in the Latino community. I was thinking of one particular community here in Hayward, very strong parent community group. Just amazing the work that they have done to clean up their community. So, you know, they take pride in being able to go to other communities and say, you can do this.
Filipino Advocates for Justice is a 42-year-old multi-service organization. We're based out of Oakland. Um, and uh, we do a few things. We do, obviously, we do youth services. We do low-wage worker support. We do immigration advocacy and counseling. And we do civic engagement. The thing about drug and alcohol and mental health and, and other issues, teen pregnancy, is that um, a lot of Filipinos can be reluctant to get help or even receive services having to do with any of those issues, okay? And so, um, so Filipino Advocates for Justice actually fills a very, a very specific need in, in giving uh, Filipino and other youth and families, you know, a safe space to talk about drugs and alcohol. We're able to tap into some very positive Filipino cultural traits that actually help youth and families build resilience against drug and alcohol. One of them being a sense of community. To whatever degree you feel supported, to whatever degree you feel that you know, other people are facing the same problems, you can find a place you know, to, to get support. You know, you'll be able to better you know, handle your own problems and not have to turn to drugs and alcohol in the first place. This organization guides students to be able to understand to love yourself um, and to keep pushing to be a, be a better version of yourself. And if um, you're a better version of yourself, then you can be a better support to, um, to people in your community. At PYC, it's youth-led, so youth teaches the youth because it's a different experience to be taught by your peers than to be taught by an adult. A lot of my peers, I do see them on a daily basis and I do see them smiling. So that's just off of that alone, I can tell that I have done something and FAJ has done something to change their life in a more positive way. To Filipino Advocates for Justice, thank you for changing my life in honestly the best way that you possibly could. My family has taught me how to be great, but Filipino Advocates taught me how to use that greatness to help others. To help families understand, uh, African American families understand what their true culture is and to identify the best of that culture and to utilize that to resolve the problems of drug abuse, uh, lack of education, broken families. What, do you, what are their families doing now that is from African culture and then showing them how to use that and strengthen it to, to strengthen the families as well as um, create tools to prevent drug and uh, alcohol and substance abuse. Alameda County through Behavioral Healthcare Services has provided us financial resources to be able to one, hire the staff and then to provide resources. Part of the African American culture is what they call breaking bread. And so to sit down and be able to have a talk around a table, around food, makes people feel a little more comfortable. And just the support and acknowledgement that our program is successful has been very helpful. Where you could see signs and symbols of African culture in the neighborhood. You could see signs of neighbors working together to, to handle tasks. You could see signs of the youth connected to the elders. That is what I would say is a healthy community. Also, the class have helped me, you know, be a better, um, be a better uh, father to my son. Um, so when I'm with him, like, you know, I, I tend to not be on my phone so much. I make sure that I, you know, I, I play with him, go outside, just doing a whole lot of things. My experience in the program helped me to develop a relationship with myself first. And it also gave me a relationship with other kids around me and it helped me to be more respectful and to get respect. It also gave me more hope and, and dreams that I can have, and I thought I had lost it out there in the streets. We promote the healing of families, then we can help prevent alcohol and other drugs, get back to our family reunion our gatherings, those Sunday dinners, and just coming together and speaking out about our problems that sometimes we tend to hide and um, don't talk about.
Q is an agency. We provide services to youth and families um, in Alameda County with behavioral health care services um, and alcohol and drug prevention. So in the schools right now, I'm actually at um, schools here in the Tri-City area. We provide classroom presentations, par parent presentations about drug and alcohol prevention, individual counseling, and group counseling. So some of the protective factors that the community already has, um, they do have a lot of youth outreach programs. I know that a lot of my young people, they attend the um, boxing, there's a boxing scene here where the kids are able to go there and the community is right down the um, street from the school. Um, it's very, um, culturally, they're very intact here. There's different, um, it's very diverse. I will say the school climate is very diverse and there's a lot of different groups that the kids come in that are already con connected to, whether sports, whether it's ballet folklorico or whatever it may be. My best friend, he was in the program. He used to go after, every day after school. I'm like, yo, what's this about? He was like, he, we just talking about peer pressure and um, drug abuse. And I'm like, oh, that's not, I don't want to, I don't want to tackle that situation. I don't want to hear nothing like that. But then I was like, let me just give it, let me just give it a try. And I got into the program. I met a wonderful lady named Miss Ashley. And she talked about it. I wasn't too comfortable with it because, like I said, I didn't want to tackle that situation because I grew up with stuff like that. I knew some people and stuff like that. And so just opening up to things like that, it just like it, it, it. it I felt comfortable just just every week going going there and just talking about it more. And then after that, I'm just like, you know what? I got another thing to say about this. It just it just opened a lot of doors for me. I felt in a way. When my parents were deported. I've always had this goal like, okay, well, they came here to better their life and to give their kids a better life. So I was like, I have to keep that in mind. I have to keep in mind that my mom and dad sacrificed so much for me and I have to make something of it. When I see that folks come together and they are listened to and they come up with creative approaches and ideas that it, it helps them to be engaged in this and, and their, let's say their enthusiasm, they get nurtured, but their enthusiasm is, it affects others and gets others involved. And also it's encouraging for me when I see them involved as well, because it helps with the collective resiliency of all of us. The voices of the village in our community are dedicated to the restoration of wellness. Think about that, the restoration of wellness. Alameda County Behavioral Health Care Prevention is working to add value and meaning by listening to the voices of the village and honoring our sacred stories. Voices from the village.